Grace Church, <clears throat> I titled today's study, A Short Work. And I'm in Romans 9. And I'm going to start in verse 27. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work would the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah's, or they're talking about the Isaiah, the book of Isaiah said before, except the Lord of the Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. And what the Lord's saying here is there's a short work. Um, there's a lot of talk these days about the end times, the last days. We are in the last days. In fact, the, the countdown to the last days began from the time the Lord poured out his spirit upon all flesh in Acts 2. We've, we're in the last days a short work. There's an age of grace, and then that window will close in Revelation 4, culminating in the, the church leaving. And the Lord has left us a seed. Thy seed is Christ. But we don't see much of that out there anymore. The reason the Lord is cutting the work short is similar to what he did in uh, Genesis, because if he didn't, no flesh would be saved. Mankind would self-destruct. You can go back to the book of Genesis and you see in the beginning, in fact, the Bible tells you that. Um, let me read you a verse here. 1 John 3.8 talks about the fact that he that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So from the beginning... When mankind showed up on planet Earth, the devil has been fighting against his creator. The devil's not happy that he lost his place in heaven. He fell from heaven. A third of his angels fell. Our Lord said that. He beheld Satan falling. He fell from a heavenly realm and then created mankind so he could have fellowship. And that's why salvation is a perfect filtering process so that there'll be no more... Um, Rebellion in heaven, so to speak. He's had one rebellion. He's had enough. This time, he knows that those that make it to salvation, the plan of salvation, and planet Earth, and make it to him realm, he knows they're the real deal. They're tried, true, and tested. The perfect filtering process. But had the Lord not have cut the day short, and Mark 13, uh, 19 and 20 talks about had the days even in the tribulation not been shortened, no flesh would be saved. Mankind would self-destruct. Now, look at it this way. When you go back to Genesis and read, and you notice in chapter 3, the devil came along and finally got man to bite the bait, so to speak, kind of like a fisherman. The devil had been fishing and fishing with mankind, trying to get mankind to fall into the realm of sin and unbelief. Mankind had it made. He had it perfect. Yet God had a perfect plan of salvation. He had a perfect plan for mankind, the Garden of Eden. Just keep the garden, leave that, stay away, you know, leave that tree of knowledge of good and evil alone. Everything else was all great. I also believe that in the end, when you read back, in, it'll be restored back to what it, similar to what it was in the beginning. There'll be a new heaven, new earth, and God will be here on earth. New Jerusalem will come down. And God will be here on earth. But mankind had it made. And you actually have it made too. You have a plan of salvation. But the Lord is cutting the work short. Let me look. Let's go to, uh, I do have a few notes here. I want to go to First Timothy, I believe. Was it 4.1? And you'll see a common fact. Uh, First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. I know a lot of people, one of the hot buttons in, in the so-called church is, is once saved, always saved. But if you depart, you can't depart from something unless you were there. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We've got so much junk 
I feel for young people today growing up with all the junk and nonsense out there in the world alone, let alone even, you know, <laughs> people, uh, people talk about testimonies. And I've talked about it in studies before. My greatest deliverance to me was not just from the world and its influence, you know, with the, the obvious, you know, people talk about the drinking and all that other stuff. Well, those are my biggest deliverance was from religion, from all the doctrines of devils that were out there, all the friendly fire I got hit with when I got born again. And stuff I look back and I go, gosh, that isn't anywhere near the truth. There's a tsunami flood because the enemy has perfected his craft more and more. He's had 6,000 years to work on, on, on mankind, and he's gotten better and better at it. And mankind is falling farther and farther away from the Lord. Mankind's becoming too self-reliant. You can read that in uh, Revelation 3, 14, I believe, when he starts dealing with the Laodicean church. If you notice, the Laodicean church is the last church mentioned before the fall. But I, not the fall, but the end of the church age. The end of, uh, end of grace is what I call it, because in Revelation 4, 1, mankind, the church is caught up into the heavenly realm. The view is now from above, despite what, that's another hot button, but we'll try, we'll deal with that another time. We've dealt with it in the past. But the Laodicea is saying, church, they're rich. Uh, they have need of nothing. Mankind's become too self-reliant. Back in the days, even in America, 100 years ago, people, 50 years ago, people had to make make it work, or they didn't, couldn't provide, they didn't, they wouldn't have what it took Make, people died because they didn't have the provisions needed for their families. Today, mankind's so self-reliant, they don't have to do nothing. It's the same with these, uh, a lot of these so-called churches or religious organizations. Mankind, they just show up, let somebody else do it for them. In fact, we had some goofball the other day get on and say he needed 50-some million for a jet. <laughs> ah! How did it get to that point? How does it get to that point? You know, now they get, they, they're so blatant now. It used to be somewhat subtle, and they used to try to hide it. Now it's blatant. Telethons and, and, and some of this junk, that, you know, you name it, they've preached it. Well, the, the devil has a, a buffet table of doctrines to appeal to the flesh, and that's what you're seeing. In fact, well, I should finish it. Depart from faith, giving heat, seducing spirits, doctrines, demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. When you sear something, cauterize it, it's no longer sensitive. Well, that's, I don't know how people sleep at night and preach the stuff they do or, or the money pitches anymore. It's like, you know, these people, it, they're CEOs of religious corporations. They're not apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. They're CEOs of religious corporations. It's pathetic. How did it get to this point? I blame the people that don't study the word, that don't rightly divide. And, and uh, it talks about that in Hebrews 5.14. Time you ought to be teacher, you have a need that one teach you again. You've become lazy and dull of hearing. You're not exercising your senses to discern both good and evil. And like uh, Isaiah 5.20 talks about, the days will come when they call evil good and good evil. Prophesy unto us smooth things. 1 John, uh, what was I looking for? 1 John. Mm. 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last time. So we're in the last time. The Bible, and we'll go over scriptures that tell you about the last It is the last time. As you've heard that Antichrist shall come, and even now there are many Antichrists, whereby... We know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For had they been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. There's no excuse. There's no reason. And 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 I encourage you, go to the Lord yourself. Quit relying. Don't, you know, uh, Philippians, talk, I think it was Philippians talks about, we have the circumcision, worship of God in the Spirit, Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. I believe that's Philippians 3.3 3 in that realm. Don't rely on anybody else for salvation. 
you can hear it for yourself. And the devil's going to come in and take cheap shots. But we're not ignorant of his devices anymore. You should be. And don't be supporting these false prophets. Walk away. Move on. Kick them to the curb. Fire them. <laughs> Fire them. Um, and many antichrists. Because in the last days, Christ has revealed who he is, the Son of God, has been revealed. And that's what's missing in the church. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 40, 44, and that range talks about the second Adam. That's what's missing in the church today, the revelation of the mystery, the doctrine of Christ. We talk a lot about Jesus, but we're not focusing on the inward, the spirit, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's what's missing today. Because that's who, for this purpose, the Son of God manifests. Why? If he manifests in your life, he's going to destroy the works of the devil. He's going to do it in your life as well, just like he did for Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth was not taken in by the enemy. He lived a life without sin. He was tempted, but he didn't go down that road. He didn't follow a stranger's voice. And why should you? Don't let the, the thief come out to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't let him rob you. Um, second, or first Peter, well, Jude mentions it as well. In, ver, in verse 17, But beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mo mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These are they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. If the Bible says, if any man, Romans 8 9, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. What people are doing is, in the beginning, we were made in the image and likeness of God. Now, now mankind has kind of reversed that. He's trying to make God in the image and likeness of man. We have many larger than life people out there that have changed the doctrines to fit their lifestyle. And a lot of Christians do that. They twist and turn the scriptures to fit their lifestyle. It doesn't work. In the end, you're going to be one of them going, hey, I thought we prophesied and did all these wonderful works in your name. Matthew 7, 21. He's going, I never knew you. Depart from me, you to work iniquity. I told you you needed to worship me in spirit and truth. The flesh profits nothing. The doctrine of Christ shows you how to crucify the flesh with the affections and the lust so that you can walk in the spirit. We are in the last days. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1, he'll tell you that as well. Or did I read that one already? Oh, I read 4 1. 2 Timothy 3 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, which includes these alternate lifestyles that mankind is trying to put uh, God's stamp of approval on. Ah, uh, no. Not happening. Oh, no, you didn't. Truce breakers, false accusers, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minders, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof so from such turn away. Turn away from that nonsense. Move on. You shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 17 talks about coming out from among them, be ye separate, and touch not the unclean thing. Some of you are are grabbing hold of something unclean, and you wonder why your life uh, is unclean. You know, back in the Old Testament, they told them not to touch the diseased person or the dead people so that you wouldn't bring disease and, and this stuff into the camp. Well, some of us are touching a lot of dead, diseased doctrine. If it's not the doctrine of Christ, it's not of God. Then it falls under the category of doctrines of demons. How did, how did mankind dream up all these denominations? When the Lord told you specifically, it was one Lord, one faith. We are in the last days. And the Bible's clear of that. 2 Peter 3.3. 3, but comfort. Take comfort in the fact that the Lord has made a way of escape for his church. And 2 Peter 3.3. 3, knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. You know, the Bible talks about the God is their belly, their glory is their shame. They mind earthly things from such turn away. And saying, where is the promise that's coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Well, that's the doctrine of demons. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and of the earth standing out of the water and in the water, 
whereby the world that then was being overflowed, being overflowed with water, perished. God had to intervene back in the days of Noah. Man kind of would have self-destructed even back then. And then he began a new, new heaven and new earth. And the Bible talks about the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Lord be. So the Lord's going to uh, set things in order here shortly. A short, And he tells you that, a short work, because of the fact that mankind has become lazy, dull of hearing, and self-reliant, for lack of a better term. You don't have to be that way. You have an unction from the Holy One, you know all things. Uh, 1 John 2.20, we just read that as well as 1 John 2.27, talks about that the Spirit is going to teach you. And you should know these things, church. And if it's not of God, walk away. Don't put your stamp of approvals on something God didn't approve of. So I encourage you, stay in the, stay in the faith. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And continue looking up. Your salvation draws nothing. God bless church. Stay rooted and grounded.